to another episode of Cranial Diarrhea. I'm Tiff. And I'm Harry Buttocks. And before we get started, I would like to share a story, a news story. Would that be okay? Sure. Breaking news. In Idaho, a man died today. He was a farmer. His chicken escaped. He chased his chicken, ended up on the interstate, where he had both hands wrapped around the chicken's neck, finally securing the chicken before he got hit with a bus. Authorities say this is the first ever known incident of a man dying while choking his chicken. Witnesses say, I heard it can make you blind. (laughs) You've been waiting all week week to say that, haven't you? I have. I was like going to sleep one night. It was like 11, 30, 12 o'clock. And that popped into my head and I was like, that's freaking hilarious. You made that up. I did. That's a little concerning. <laughs> it just popped into my head. It's like, that's pretty funny. I'm going to start trying to do that every week now. Watch, I'll go into like some kind of like, whatever you call it, creative block, like crap. I don't know. Talking about. I haven't known what I was talking about since we started the show. Is that not? And I'm not talking about just this show. I'm talking about all the way back. So. So, folks, I got some emails in that said they really enjoyed last week's seriousness, so we may have to do that again. We didn't get any emails. Shh, I'm making things up. (laughs) Shocking. (laughs) Shocking. What are we talking about this week besides a man dying while choking this chicken? So, (laughs) this week, Dad wanted to kind of do a deeper dive into the pyramids. Gif, the talking mongoose. The pyramids and kind of like the uh, symbolism behind the triangle. Full disclosure, my notes are not great, people, this week. And I'm a little hungover. I'm a lot hungover. And I I don't know how this is going to go. About normal. <laughs> like, I want to crawl in a hole with a blanket and just sleep, hibernate. Yes. Uh, I know I feel. For some reason, I'm really tired this week. What's the week, though? It's just been a long week. I'm tired due to the copious amounts of rum. <laughs> rum, 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 rum. And the karaoke, my throat's a little sore. So I was <laughs> screaming free bird. <laughs> I, I tried to get her to send a video. I was going to put it on here, but she wouldn't send me a video. Ooh. Hey, the cool thing is we filled almost three minutes with nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the name of this show. Yes, cranial nothing. It's called constipation this week. Yeah, you get what you get. Sorry. <laughs> On this week's show, it's cranial constipation. <laughs> it's like one of those one of those weeks where we're like, we really need to put a show out. Yes, and it's really like, yeah. Okay. But we're both kind of like, whatever. <laughs> so. <laughs> whatever. So we kind of took a, uh, what, did you already tell them what we're talking about? Yeah. Oh, I missed that one. I'm the hungover one. Yeah, but I don't pay attention, so. Well, that's fair. Awkward silence. <laughs> so uh, this week, uh, daughter decided to split up the research, and I had pyramids and vortexes. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the vortexes. Yeah, they were boring. But the pyramids were kind of interesting because they're all pyramidical. <laughs> really? Yes. There aren't any square pyramids? That was actually a statement. They're all <laughs> pyramidical. There aren't any round ones? <laughs> I, I have yet to see a round pyramid. <laughs> Maybe we should build one. I'm shocked but, by this information. <laughs> I, that blew me away. I, did, I was like, I don't need to do any other research. All pyramids are He's pyramidical. Like, they're all in the shape of triangles. <laughs> Done. But it, it was, it was <laughs> they're all pyramidical. So if you ever wonder about a pyramid, it's pyramidical. Done and done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Five minutes. But Woo. it was kind of cool because it kind of did allude to the, the shape of the pyramid being the triangle and the triangle kind of. One of the things, and I kind of went down a rabbit hole, was one of the things that about the triangle is kind of linked to a lot of secret societies. And then a lot of the secret societies are kind of linked to what they call alien origination for their information and technology. So it was really kind of cool 
But the coolest thing about it was pyramids are pyramidical. The more you know. Yes. But it really gets into like this secret society and like a selection process. And there was even one theory out there that was really cool. It was talking about because like in, in math that's taught in schools, of course, or in pyramidical classrooms, you know, a lot of math centers around triangles and solving triangles. Well, it does squares and circles too, but I didn't want to ruin these paper people's day and rain on their parade and say it's all straight. But they were actually proposing that the use of this information when they're working on triangles is used to select the next, I guess, individuals that are brought into the triangular society for the alien leader to show them how to do pyramidical. Are you making that up? That, no, that that's, sounds made up. That is, it's a conspiracy theory. Oh. It's I don't believe. That's that why crap. it sounds made up. I don't believe <laughs> that crap, but up. I just thought it was interesting that people do believe that. People believe a lot of weird yeah. shit. But it's... there was a lot of connections about the the power. Why am I talking about your triangles? I need to get off that. Never mind. We're going back to pyramids are pyramidical. You can talk about triangles. My notes suck. But the cool thing is, is a lot of the research was like based on how the pyramids were built and how the technology for that structure to be built really didn't exist in our society. Hey, I shall be quiet now. You don't want to talk about pyramidical pyramids anymore. Let's talk about vortexual vertexes. Did you find anything, any correlation between pyramids and vortexes? Kind of, but not really. There was cool. more. There was more. I'm glad we spent a week on this. Yeah. There was more <laughs> correlation between pyramids and triangles and triangles and vortexes. So, in a roundabout relative way, it's like your second cousin type deal. But vortexes, now, this is cool because pyramids come to a point and vor vertex, vortexes come to a point. So, vortexes are actually pyramidical as well. So vortexes come to a point where they take energy and they compress the energy to make it more powerful as it comes to the corner. This providing the vortex. I saw somewhere that the pyramids used to have, the, the tops of the pyramids used to, um, I don't know if it was like coated with it or if they just, the point was made out of it, but it was a conductive, like a magnetic conductive material. material. Yes, yes I, I read that too, which I never really understood, but it's something. It was something about sourcing power, and so I was thinking, did they set up like, you know, getting power from the sun? Was it good? Was it evil? Because most vortexes that that spiral up, according to couple of websites now who knows if they're accurate who really knows but that's more of a positive type energy mm -hmm. than the ones that spiral down or more negative mm -hmm. so are the pyramids more spiraling up or is it just an alien that had a fetish for madonna and wanted the earth to look like that when they saw him from the you know how she wore her you think time traveling <laughs> aliens put madonna like massive i wonder if you go to space madonna and cones in the desert I wonder if you go to space and you fly over under the pyramids, it's like written like a virgin and we just can't see it. I'm going to say probably not. Wouldn't that be cool? We no. should do that. <laughs> like draw it in the sand. <laughs> but did you know pyramids are pyramidical? I do know. So, the, the pyramids have a lot of like mystique about them. But a lot of the theories do point to where they think it, a race of higher intelligence visited the planet, and that's how they got developed. Okay. You seem so excited this morning. I'm so excited. I can tell. You're like, and you might want to speak up because I can barely hear you. I don't care if people hear me. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> so there is a correlation between all this and triangles, and I'm tired of talking there, and that's more research than I've ever done, so I'm not doing any more research. I'm done. Yeah. Your turn. So. Pyramidical. There's a lot of pyramidical. There's a lot of pyramidical. Oh <laughs> You're hung over on messing with you. <laughs> okay, I'll be quiet now. <laughs> You're gonna fall asleep on your mic. Next thing you hear is like, <laughs> <laughs> she go, <laughs> she out. So there's a lot of symbolism. Um, really, with a triangle symbolism. With triangles. No, that's like yeah. a pyramid being pyramidical. Hair keeps getting stuck to the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that problem. Um. So let's see. I warned you ahead of time that my notes are just one big jumble. So we're just gonna get into it. It's like Cajun soup jambalaya. So let's start with the inverted triangle. It's supposed to symbolize Isn't it like a really shy triangle. Like no, I'm just yeah. shy. Yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to symbolize water. So it can't see my third side. I'm shy. It, it symbolizes <laughs> purification, healing, and peace. Um, the inverted triangle with an added horizontal line is Earth. There would be a square, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is stability, grounding, and fertility. Um, <clears throat> the equal. Now wait a minute. I I gotta call time out. Okay. Uh, I, okay. I understand you're saying that's what they represent. It's yes. But what? I don't understand where this came from. Well, I don't know. Oh, good research. <laughs> That's usually what I get. Okay, sorry. Go right ahead. <laughs> so an in, introverted. Inverted. Oh, an in, I thought you said introverted. That's why I went with this. <laughs> inverted. You can tell I don't even listen to the show when we're doing it. <laughs> so next is the equilateral triangle. Um, Big word. What does that mean? An equilateral triangle is a triangle that has each That's side is equal. Say. Yeah. Yes. You know. What are they hence equal to? The equal lateral to each other. But wouldn't it be equal vertical for the ones that come up? Because if you're lateral, you're going to the side. So couldn't it be equilateral vertical? Mm. Equal vertilateral? Vertilateral. Wow. So this was actually used in ancient civilizations as the symbol of a deity. Uh, for Egyptians, <laughs> the equilateral triangle symbolized the trowel, uh, one of the most perfect of life. I don't know what that. What I don't, is a trowel? I thought it was one of those digging things, but that's I don't what know I why you would. <laughs> oh, that's it. Instead of the Egyptians, they're like, this is cool. Trowel it. What? Can you trial it instead of dig it? Let's talk about Buddhism. Oh, no, brother, can you trial it? It's pyramidical, brother. What you gonna do when the equilateral triangle comes after you? Triangles are seen in a lot of temples. Oh, um, she just went right past that. Other one. religious religious <laughs> places, because the triangle actually symbolizes the power of the number three. Um, and it's that said to be a magic number. Now, look, I know the number two is powerful because when you got to take the number two, you got some force. Oh, we're going with poop humor. <laughs> poop the, humor. I hope I got, yeah, I got three fingers up. I wasn't paying attention. Sometimes my So let my me give you some examples matter. of why three is a magic number. Yes, that's what okay. I was going to ask. Why is three a magic number? So these are just like. Wasn't there a song about that? Three is like, the loneliest magical third number. Third time's the charm, right? So it's. it's but is it really? Luck. I don't know. And then it, it uh, for whatever reason, it relates to creativity and inspiration. Three does? I guess. That's what I wrote. How does it relate to creativity <laughs> and... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Y'all research that one and get back to it. <laughs> I'm just giving you the starting points, and you can find your way from here. Yeah, let us know what's going on. <laughs> Somebody do a podcast and let us know about this stuff. <laughs> this is the worst. I have never been so unprepared for a show in my life. I just wish somebody would really do a podcast on this stuff that would tell us what's going on. I'm just like, here are these talking points, and go. Yeah, you're driving me to drinking. <clears throat> um, let's talk about the triangle with the circle inside of it. Yeah, let's, let's talk That's about Taco it. That's Taco Bell, isn't it? Briefly, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Is that the one with like the eyeball in it? That's on the dollar? <clears throat> no. Isn't there like a pyramid triangle on the dollar with an eyeball in it? Yes, and I, that's in here somewhere. Okay. Um, the main meaning of the triangle with a circle inside, it's it's used in association with secret societies and satanic Ooh, groups over the centuries. Secret societies. Um, additionally, it is the representative, representative of the Illuminati's god, commonly known as Satan or Ibis. It is Satan. I don't worship We don't, don't speak know. about Illuminati. No, no, no. Um, Wait a minute. Interesting. Read, read that again. It, it's What? Go back over that last part. Mm -hmm. Additionally, it's the representative of the Illuminati's god, commonly known as Satan or Ibis. Now, is that the triangle or the triangle with the eye? The triangle with the, uh, not with the eye, the triangle with the circle. Oh, there. okay, okay. Um, interesting fact. There are people <clears throat> excuse me, that believe if you sleep under a pyramid form, you can optimize your body and heal your pain. So there is like zero proof for that. I, I don't know where I came from. Um, so in terms of Christianity, the triangle is a symbolism for the Trinity, the Holy Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, whatever you want to. <clears throat> Another Christian symbol incorporating triangles is that of the, it's called the Eye of Providence or the All Seeing Eye. Um, that's what's on the dollar bill. I, I'm kind of. I'm, I'm kind of wondering since the triangle kind of represents the deity in Christianity. Yeah, yeah. If because what you said about the other with the circle in it, mm -hmm. so the circle part would be what they represent as kind of the alternative, I guess. Yeah, I would think so. But I that that doesn't. I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me because I'm like, wouldn't that be like an inverted triangle? You know what I mean? That's kind of what. Like I'm if like, it's supposed to be the reverse of. Yeah, but I guess the Trinity. Yeah, but I guess I don't know. That's really that's kind of. Hmm, so, that. what's really interesting? So, to the Greeks, um, the triangle is seen as the delta, as a delta glyph, and it's actually symbolic of a doorway. Um, the thought that was the combination of the polarities would provide a new opening, balancing thought and emotion, and would provide a doorway to higher wisdom. So that's interesting. Um, so if a triangle is positioned pointing upwards, uh, some of the symbolism there um, is masculinity, masculinity, masculinity. <laughs> Breaking so news. <laughs> You're going to be disappointed. McDonald's has stopped serving breakfast. Oh. So I just told her to check Harvey's for y'all to see if they're serving breakfast. <laughs> That'd be... I thought they didn't stop until 11. That's what I thought, but... Stupid McDonald's. I guess they decided to change. Grubhub doesn't deliver breakfast, I mean, uh, lunch for McDonald's until after 11. Well, I always thought 11, but evidently they stopped serving breakfast. Um, Dang it, Ronald. So masculinity, solar, active, assertive, up, and father. Up. Uh, That's what it okay. I get symbolizes it. pointing father. out. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, when flipped upside down, it represents <coughs> femininity, femin femininity, 
Feminine. Feminine. Passivity down. Uh, mother, lunar, and cave. Somebody made this crap up. <laughs> Triangles can be found in ancient symbolism. Sim oh my god, symbolism. Maybe I need to slow it down. Symbolism. Struggling over here. And runes, dating back to the earliest uh, civilization. And that'd be nineteen seventy. <laughs> so, let's <laughs> let's use an example. So the dragon's eye. It's an ancient Germanic symbol. What is a dragon's eye? Well, I have pictures on this computer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you'll put it on there. Okay. I'll put it on there. If I ever watch the show, I'll see it. You won't. <laughs> um, the dragon's eye is an isosceles or equilateral, tri equilateral triangle pointing downward with a Y in the middle that connects the three points of the triangle together. So according to the Dictionary of Symbols, it combines the triangle meaning threat and the Y meaning a choice between good and evil. Uh, it's a well-known symbol of protection, and it's said to protect anyone who recites the incantation to it. What is an incantation? For lack of a better word, it like spell. Oh. Um, I got some beans in the incantation over there, and the, you can pull them out and cook them. something in here that I wanted you to look get like you're on. really just kind of like I just want to get through this my head hurts I got the cotton mouth. okay let's let's go back to the eye of Providence really okay quickly. let's go back to the eye of Providence uh so the eye of Providence or the all-seeing eye of God is a symbol showing an eye often surrounded by rays of light um, and usually enclosed by a triangle right so it represents the eye of God watching over mankind or divine Providence the association of an eye with the concept of divine providence did not emerge until well into the Christian era, and obviously, and Renaissance European iconography, where it was an explicit image of the Christian trinity. 17th century depictions of the eye of providence sometimes show it surrounded by clouds or sunbursts. In 1782, the eye of providence was adopted as part of the symbolism on the reverse side of the Great Seal of the United States. It was first suggested as an element of the Great Seal by the first three design committees in 1776 and is thought to be a suggestion of the artist consultant Pierre Eugene du Cimetier. I don't know how to say that. In his original proposal to the committee, he placed the eye over shields, symbolizing each of the original 13 states of the Union. On the, uh, the version of this seal that was eventually approved, the eye is positioned above an unfinished pyramid of 13 steps, again symbolizing the original states, but incorporating, incorporating the nation's potential for growth. Um, there is... So this Eye of Providence is often associated with the Freemasons. Um, the eye first appeared as a part of the standard iconography of the Freemasons in 1797 with the publication of Thomas Smith Webb's Freemasons Monitor. So here it represents that the all-seeing eye of God is a reminder that and is a reminder that the man's thoughts and deeds are always observed by God, who was referred to in Masonry as the great architect of the universe. Um, so there is a theory that, you know, there's a theory that the free... I'm going to interrupt you for just a second. <clears throat> no, I'm not. Go ahead. Never mind. <clears throat> okay. There's, you know, there's a theory that the Freemasons were, like, heavily... Uh, involved with the start of our country, right? Right. Okay. So, as a part of this theory, they're saying that the Freemasons are the ones that put this on the seal. Yeah, that's... However, uh, 
the the masonic use of the eye dates to 14 years after the creation of the seal what about the skull society did it say anything about that well i don't know what that is so i'm gonna okay. go with no okay never mind um you have other i mean there are other things right like pentagrams uh triangles are prominent in like you know depictions of stars and like you know all that stuff um yeah so there's just there's a lot going on there it depends on i guess what culture you're in what region you're in what you believe but triangles, I mean, it's like full of it's it's full of symbolism. It is just yeah, it's kind it's of up one for of those, interpretation, right? It's kind yeah. of one of those things that I guess every society and every different orientation in society kind of has their own interpretation. But it's really weird that the triangles really show up a lot, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's kind of like there's some kind of consistency there. What do you think when you see a triangle? Pizza. I think yield. <laughs> <laughs> I think pizza. <laughs> it means yield to oncoming oh, traffic. Because, you know, pizza's cut into triangles. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, it's a it's a circle. It's cut into triangles. It's served it's a in a circle square. circle of life. Served in a square box. Cut into the triangles. And you think the circle of life is a pizza? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a good definition for me. <laughs> Did you realize pizza had so much symbolism? Think about that. The circle of life. But there are square pizzas too. In the square box of the universe. Cut into the molecular triangles. Which represent pyramidical vertexes. <laughs> She pressed the balloon button. <laughs> <laughs> Hard. Yeah. No. So we might be on a new conspiracy. Dominoes. <laughs> dominoes. Oh, dominoes, because everything falls like dominoes and fits together. I don't like dominoes. Uh, but it that works for the analogy. It's too greasy for me. Now, what other show could you take the serious conversation <laughs> of pyramidal pyramid all the way to dominoes and make it work? That's really cool. We didn't make any of that work. None of that worked. That worked. That worked. You ask our one viewer when you talk to her this week. That worked. Oh <laughs> that spin worked. Work. So now every time everybody eats a pizza, they're going to be going, it's, it's the here. circle of life. If you're going by that logic, then any circular food is a circle no, of life. No, because <laughs> most circular food is not cut into triangles served in a square box representing the universe. Cake. Pizza and cake. <laughs> we got a party over here. Man, we've got the meaning of life. It's pizza is and it, cake. Okay, is it really sad that I look forward to, I'm looking so forward to my birthday because I can have cake. Because I want cake. Why don't you just eat cake? I don't, you have to have a reason for cake. You can't just eat cake. I don't have to have a reason for cake. When you're really. diabetic, you ha there has to be a reason to eat cake. <laughs> okay, so like. That's, I, that's why I'm diabetic, because I ate cake without reason. So I'm going to give you a reason to eat cake. Anytime you want cake. The reason to eat cake when you want cake is because you want cake. That's my reason. No, there has to be a celebration. The only cake that I'm you can eat without cake. The only cake that you can eat without reason is a rice cake. Oh heck no. I'm celebrating or a pancake. my capacity and my <laughs> freedom as an American, as a God fearing American. I'm obviously to eat cake. I'm obviously I'm just celebrating hungry. my freedom by eating cake daily. I'm hungry. Uh -huh. 
And I went on this long tangent about eating cake and I get I'm hungry. I'm hungry. It's <laughs> like <laughs> over my cheese. Uh, uh, we do have people out to get breakfast, our vast staff of people. <laughs> I'm hungry. You know what's really sad is that I when you texted me to come over here, I had literally just started a cup of noodles. Like the ra top ramen cup of noodles. And I forgot about it, and it's sitting on my counter. Yeah, that's not the food we want. Well, I wanted... <laughs> what I really want is lo mein, but I don't have lo mein. I had a couple noodles. <laughs> so I made do. <laughs> I really wanted Captain Crunch, but all I had was Cheerios. So I just imagined. <laughs> I was going to use my imagination and pretend... Ooh, this low mane is so good. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany, you're eating baloney. No, it's low mane. This is the worst low mane I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Don't call this restaurant again. What is it? Why you does know, it taste but, like peanut butter but and jelly? Funny, <laughs> but what's funny is you're craving low mane and you use grub. Up. Holy shit. <laughs> you use grub up for everything, but you didn't order low mane from grub up. You just go eat No, some because ramen. I'm really. Um, so I'm really trying to, you know, not, no, not. I haven't had any pictures this week. Spend a, a shit ton of money. Um and oh, the food delivery and like, like the Amazon stuff is like it, you know, it's a lot. You I, mean like individuals that order two computers in the same week? Okay, wait. No. You see when you say you it like can't that. Hide money. So I ordered the first computer for my daughter cuz her computer is like busted. So cause she busted it. Let's be real. <laughs> uh anyway sorry uh, so i ordered this first computer and then she's on the phone with her friend and the the main reason she uses uses these computers is to play sims right so i order her a, a chromebook you know i, I didn't even think about it sims. and it doesn't support sims so then i'm like shit what am i gonna do so i was like well i'll just order another one and then uh Instead of canceling the first money. one, I was just like, whatever, I'll just keep it. <laughs> I don't know why. You can't hide money. So like, I, I have, I have uh, three laptops. I have a work laptop, and then I have two personal laptops that just belong to me. You can't have money, folks. You and just can't. One is for, like, uh, I take a lot of pictures. Like, I'm the, I'm the designated photographer for family functions. Um... So I take a lot of pictures and I have like editing software and stuff like that. So I use one laptop for that and then this new one will be strictly for you our know, show. I guess that's not unusual because I have two laptops I just realized. One I use for podcasts and one I use for other stuff. There and you then go. I have a tablet and then another computer. Yeah, I guess that's not unusual. There you go. By the way, I do wanna um while we were we moved off the subject, but on the subject of money uh, Brian from Chicago, fuck you. Fuck you. Let me tell you, every year around this time, it happens every year around this time, someone steals either my debit card information or my husband's debit card information. From Chicago? Well, just this year was from Chicago. It just happened Friday. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Six hundred dollars. But you filed it with the bank, so you get your money. Yeah, back, we so. filed it with the bank, but it's it's really, really irritating. Yes. But the so one last year, or no, the year before last, uh, somebody in India had all kind like Netflix accounts and like everything else set up through my husband's debit card information. So. So what they're doing with the with the guy at the bank told us that they're doing is they're going through and they're typing they're using random numbers until one hits and then they'll use it until it's just dis you know somebody disputes it and then they'll move on to the next get a fucking job quit stealing from people but that is their job fucking losers that is their job and they they take billions and billions yearly that's why you have to be very safe when you use any kind of app with a card number 
Yeah, one hundred percent. So anything you buy online, the best thing to do would but it's be not to a, go. It's not even that, Dad. It's they're literally typing in random numbers until something works. Well, they've got to have, they've got to have a an insight into the banks to see what numbers they're starting with. But they could have one of those code detectors where it just runs a bunch of random numbers till something hits. And I'm telling you, every year around the same time of year, every year for the past four or five years this has happened so we need to look for somebody whose birthday or some kind of special event is around this time of the year it's, it's insane what but what does and Brian in Chicago have to do with he's it? the one that took the money oh how did you find that out? so he there was a purchase made with vivant tickets no vivid tickets or something like that it's a ticket resale company okay mm -hmm. and he put his name down he didn't put his full name down but he put his name down as Brian but you know they could go in and tra uh, trace the IP addresses where those orders were placed. Is it is that who's going to do that? Well, sh the government has a whole wing of people. Do you want me there. to get the government involved? Yes, with let's get them. Let's get them. I know how um, speedy our government is, and I just don't think that that's maybe ten years from now we'll get our justice. Maybe. Anyway. Or you if you stole get, my money, fuck you. Or you That's could get the IP say. address and we could set up an infinite loop where they couldn't access their computer. How? Like, it'll just I be think a what picture. I'm going to do is it'll just, just switch. be a picture of cranial diarrhea. <laughs> I think we're just going to switch banks. Yeah. Because this happens well, that's every year. It's kind of a depressing way to end the show. Yeah, well, I just needed to put that out there. Well, it's out there. So. By the way, <laughs> Brian, whispers it like no one's gonna hear Brian has become the scapegoat in our household. So anytime something goes wrong, we're like, fucking Brian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say, like, I gotta go pick up Brian or something. Like that. <laughs> For everyone out there in the world named Brian that this one individual has <laughs> like irritated daughter, I am so sorry you're hearing that. I know. We have nothing. <laughs> it's Brian. <laughs> Fucking Brian. We're going to start singing that we don't talk to Bob Brian. Anyway, I guess that's our cue. Yep. All right, ladies and gentlemen, until next week, do something. Fuck you, Brian. <laughs>